Hello beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone is doing well. I hope you're having a fantastic day so far. In today's video, we are going to be talking about medical coding. So if you are a medical coder, this is really the video for you. In this video, there are several opportunities that are open right now with East Alabama Health. They are looking for medical coders right now and all of the roles are fully remote. So you do not need to be in Alabama to do these jobs. All you need to do is reside in one of the 50 states from the United States and you are good to go. So they are actively searching for people to fill these positions. So that means that opportunities are wide open, more opportunities because they have a lot of them open. And in addition to that, higher probability of you being considered for these positions. Some of them have been open for a while, which means that they've been looking to fill them for a while. In addition to that, they are also giving sign on bonus for some of these positions that tells you the high need to fill these roles. So I encourage you to watch this video from start to finish. So let's just dive right in. As I said, East Alabama Health, they are looking for medical coders. One of the things I want to talk about though with this facility is that when you come to their homepage and I will be including the direct link to their homepage, including the description of this video as well, so that you can go right into their process so you get more information about them. So you see on here it says who we are, it talks about applying and interviewing, and it goes further to talk about other things as well. You can search for jobs that better fit your interest if you want, but they do uh, constantly have a lot of remote positions open. So one also add that. They also have a category called temporary staffing. So I thought that was a good one to call out as well, because within this bracket, they had opportunities for nurses. They had opportunities for pharmacists, people that are interested in possibly doing on-site type of jobs as well. And but for a temporary period of time, maybe you're a nurse and maybe travel nurse is something you're interested in this would be a good place to start because then you can actually just relocate to Alabama if that's something that is of interest to you work for a period of time and it's temporary sometimes between six months to a year or in, in some cases about two years you're done with it you move on to another state so really and I felt their page was very comprehensive in addressing some of those uh, feedback I've gotten in the past where people are interested in travel nursing. Some people are interested in just leaving somewhere else for a few years, whatever the case may be. So you can definitely explore that. And then there is this category, which gives you the option to browse all open opportunities where you get to now, you know, select which of the categories are a best fit for you. So that is the homepage overview. So we're going to go right into the opportunities right now. So as I mentioned, the jobs I'm going to be addressing in this video are all medical coding positions. And there's a reason for that because some of these roles have been open for a while. They are really looking to fill them and they are all fully remote also. They are also giving sign on bonus to get these positions. So why not buy right? up to $3,000 in some cases. So I think that is pretty decent amount and it is helpful. All right. So let's talk about the first one, right? The first one I have on my list is this one, which is titled remote coding specialist and it's for surgical eyes. So that is the team you'll be supporting remote coding specialist. It's a consultant role. They call it consultant, but it doesn't mean you're consulting. It's a full-time position. As you can see on here, full-time business hours is 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday. So with this position, you already know you're going to be supporting the surgical eye uh, department, and they are looking for you to basically have a high school diploma or GED. And one of the beauty about this as well for me is that the, the experience that they're looking for is less than six months of professional coding experience. So which means that they're looking to train you as well. Obviously, as a medical coder, you know you need your certification, right? A certification for Mahima or AAPC, that is something that is just common in this line of work. So they're looking for you to have that certification. They also have other certifications that they've listed here specifically for 
focusing on ophthalmology, the, the area of medicine that specifically focus on the. So they are looking for you to have those type of certifications, but those are preferred qualifications. So they are not enforcing those. However, they do require you to have the generic certification from HIMA or AAPC. So my take on this is that if you're very interested in applying for these roles, I always encourage people to do this. You may not have the preferred qualifications that they are looking for, but in some cases, these are things that you can easily acquire. So I always encourage people have a section within your resume. You may even put that at the very top uh, part of your resume where you say that all the things that you're interested in pursuing short term, meaning very soon are whatever the preferred qualifications are. In this case, for example, let's say you have the generic uh, certification, but as a preferred qualification, they have the certified ophthalmology coder license there, right? So you can always have that at the top of your resume to say that this is definitely something you would be interested in obtaining in the near future that sort of allows them to realize that you have the generic already should that be something that they are really looking for people to have because potentially it's going to really help the individual be successful at the job at least you're interested in considering it so in addition to you gaining experience on the job you're also interested in pursuing other adventures that is going to help you continue to thrive on the job so a lot of times people consider that a whole lot more as well so i always encourage people to make sure you keep that in mind as you submit your application so what exactly are you going to be doing right so the life of a coder is very simple typically you are basically assigning different diagnostic or procedural codes to specific services that are being provided so as to allow for billing to be seamless that's really what it is so you are going to be working with a variety of people you're going to be working with doctors, providers, facilities, whatever the case may be to ensure, especially also the administrative component of the organization to ensure that as billings are being done, they are done accordingly, correctly, in accordance with the regulations out there. Regulatory bodies such as CMS have like CPT codes that they typically publish on a yearly basis for different respective uh, procedures that are happening. So typically those type of knowledge is essential in making sure the organization continue to be compliant, right? So that's really what your responsibilities are going to be as a coder. They do talk about six months or greater in terms of experience, so which we talked about already, less than six months. If you have more, I definitely encourage you to make sure you include that in your resume. So with this position, they also talk about other requirements, knowledge of medical terminology that comes with the territory, right? So someone who's also has strong knowledge in official coding guidelines, like I just described. They also talk about someone who demonstrates strong Microsoft Office knowledge uh, type of skill set, very essential for any job at this point. You need to be familiar with Microsoft Office products. They also talk about excellent organizational, computer written, as well as oral communication skills set very essential as well so one of the beauty as well with this that i really like is that they have somebody so you see there is somebody here right here that you can contact you can send them an email inquiring about the position you're interested in also providing them feedback as far as oh you know i have submitted my application i'm really interested you know how soon can I hear back? What's going on with my application? That is also a very good thing because a lot of times the feedback I get is, oh, I've submitted my application, never heard anything back. It's happened to all of us, right? So sometimes having that point of contact sort of help reconcile all of that. One of the things too, in terms of salary for my research is that the, the gap was very wide. So the generic gap that I found online was usually ranging between 35 to up to 60 thousand dollars a year for these positions however depending on where you fall you know experience what do you bring into the table what type of coding certifications do you have 
where do you reside, etc. All of that will come into play as an offer is being made to you. So very important. But it, it's really something to keep in mind as you consider your options, whether to apply or not. But I always say, submit your application, get through the very beginning stages of the process, hear more about the job, then ask those type of questions because sometimes what's available online may just be very generic, which they typically are, right? And then actually speaking to somebody can give you more insight into what specifically the job really entails and how much they're really willing to pay. Because what you see online is not the, the highest end of what a lot of departments are willing to pay. All right. So the next one is this one right here, which is still a medical coding position as well. Medical coder. You see on here, your focus is going to be just medical records. So that's what this one is. So this individual is going to focus primarily on maybe retrospective procedures that have been done, reviewing them against the, the medical records and saying this procedure was appropriate for you, maybe as a result of denials that have come back from different facility or as a result of denials that have come back from the insurance company saying that, oh, this person was not supposed to have this procedure. We're not paying for it. So this individual is going to really go down nitty gritty and say, let me review this person's medical records and see comparable. Is it, is there a need for that procedure based on ABCD? Oh, this person is hypertensive. Oh, this person was having heart palpitations, whatever the case may be that resulted in a stent being put in. So there are historicals now to um, warrant that procedure code being requested and so forth. So that's really just to give you a sense of primarily what this position is going to be talking about. They also talk about compliance of coding rules, making sure that again, everybody's doing what they are supposed to do. There is no fraud, waste and abuse of any kind. That is always one of the key essence, especially with uh, Medicare. So Medicare would deny services, especially if they feel like there is no direct need for different procedures that are happening. Or in some cases, maybe they just feel like there wasn't a prior authorization that was put in place, a request ahead of services being provided. So they are asking for high school diploma, very similar to the first one with this one, you see that the experience they're looking for is a whole lot higher, which makes a lot of sense, right? As I mentioned before, this individual will need to be seasoned to be able to understand, oh, ABCD led to this. So these are basically our justification why we needed to request uh, the D, A, B, and C. So really, it makes a lot of sense to me why they're asking for up to three years uh, for this. They're looking for you to have RIT or RIA, um, CCS as well, Associate's Degree in Health Information Technology is what they're looking for here as well. If you see this one does have a sign-on bonus of $3,000 is what they're looking for. With this position, this Based on my research, this was going to pay way higher. They were looking to um, pay this individual up to $80,000 per year. So really interesting how the shifts happens depending on what is being expected of you. So this is one definitely to consider as well. This is open and they are aggressively looking for people to fill this position, especially if you have the CCS certification or RIA or RIT uh, certification. All right, so that is that position. And then the last position I have is this one right here. It's also a coding specialist focusing on medical records as well. This is a lower level than the one I shared before. With this one, the experience is a little bit different. They are looking for one year or more professional coding type of experience. And then they are looking for certifications from AHIMA. But this individual is primarily going to focus on facility. So they are looking for you to have experience with facility coding but they put it in the preferred qualifications, which is very interesting, right? Which means that they are still open to possibly onboarding people that don't have that facility experience, but should they have it is really what you're interested in. Again, if you are somebody that is willing to learn your fast learner, you know, I always encourage people put whatever it is. If it's a certification, put it at the, the very beginning, share that already. And if in some cases, 
put a cover letter together expressing yourself saying why you feel this is really a good fit for you why you feel like you will rise up to the occasion and meet whatever it is that is being demanded of you uh, for this specific job so those are the roles i hope you find these leads helpful give this video a thumbs up subscribe to this channel if you've not subscribed already till next time i wish you guys all the very best of luck and i will catch you in the next video take care guys bye bye